Hello. In the last episode, we learned how the main wings create lift to support the wing of the aircraft. While they are the most important and essential part, alone these wings cannot safely fly an airplane. So today, we will learn how the fins at the tail of the airplane are helping the main wing to actually save your life and allow you to have a safe and comfortable flight. We will also learn how they allow the pilot to control the direction and the angle of the aircraft. Before we start, let me show you one thing. If we have any object floating in mid-air and we apply an external force on it, this force will create a torque around the center of gravity and the object will start rotating around its center. The longer the distance between the exerted force, the higher will be the generated torque. Airplanes are no exception for this rule. Any forces applied by the wing at a distance from the center of gravity will cause the airplane to rotate in the direction of the force. The same thing will happen if the force is exerted on the nose. Let's get started. Now, to understand the crucial role of these fins, we first need to learn the difference between stable system and unstable systems. For example, here we have a ball hanging from a rod which can swing freely around a hinge. We call this system a pendulum. At rest, the pendulum will not move and it will stay at its lowest position. Now, if we try to push or to apply an external force on the ball, you can see that due to the gravity pull, it will resist the force and will try to return to its initial position. This system doesn't like to change its state, its initial position, and it will always try to return to it. So we call this system a stable system. In contrast, here we have the inverted pendulum system. In this system, the ball exists at its highest uh, position above the hinge. Now, if we apply an external force on the ball, you can see that as soon as we touch the ball, it will immediately start to move in the same direction due to gravity. And because it doesn't have any way to return to its position, it will continue falling and will never return to it. So we call this system an unstable system because it doesn't like to stay in its initial state. Usually we like that our daily life devices to be stable systems. For example, we like our cars to go in straight lines and not to drift right and left on their own. It's much safer and predictable. Unfortunately, an aircraft with only the main wing installed on it is a highly unstable system and actually it is a very dangerous system. There are numerous causes of this instability. I will isolate and explain four of them. Let me show you. Please notice that the fins at the tail are not installed yet. I intentionally removed them to explain why we installed them in the first place. Now, as we've seen before, the wings of the airplane create lift. We can consider that this lift is concentrated in a single point called the center of pressure. Usually, during the design and manufacturing phase, it is really hard to match the position of the center of pressure with that of the center of gravity. You can see that there is a small distance between these two centers. Because this small distance, the lift will create a torque around the center of gravity in the direction of the nose. This torque will force the plane to turn around itself and since there is no mechanism to recover, the plane will start flipping and it will continue to do so forever. So yeah, you can see that the main wing itself is the main cause of the instability and it's preventing the airplane from flying in a straight and upright manner. Now let's assume that we manage to match the position of the center of pressure with that of the center of gravity. Since the distance between the centers became zero, no torque will be created. However, now one of the passengers decided to stand up and go to the bathroom in the front side of the airplane. So we noticed that the weight of the aircraft is shifting from back to front because of the passenger's movement, which in turn will cause the center of gravity to shift forward a little bit. And because of the small distance created between the two centers, a torque will be created, forcing the airplane to spin around itself forever. 
So the second cause of instability is the movement of the passengers and the cargo in the airplane. Now the third reason is um, we know that all airplanes have engines and these engines create thrust forces to push the airplane forward in air. Usually in big airliners like this the engines are installed beneath the wings. Now you can see that there is a distance between the thrust force and the center of gravity. And because of this small distance, a torque toward the tail of the aircraft will be created forcing the airplane to spin around itself. So the third cause of instability is the thrust forces generated by the engines. Finally, the fourth reason is the wind and the external environment like updrafts and tornadoes. For example, if the wind hits the nose of the aircraft, it will exert forces on the body which will create a torque around the center forcing the airplane to spin backward. In the same manner, if the wind hits the tail of the aircraft, it will spin forward. And since there is no applied torque in the opposite direction, the airplane will spin forever. So yeah, we can see that because of these four reasons, the system is highly unstable. If you have any aircraft with only the main wings installed on it, it is an unsafe system and actually unflyable. So we have a problem. How can we solve it? Let's get back to our inverted pendulum. The problem in this system is that the gravity is pulling down the ball which is creating a torque around the hinge in that direction. Since there is no way or mechanism to counteract the torque, the ball will not return to its position. So all what we need to do is to add a small part or to change the shape of this system in a way that we can create a counteracting torque to force the ball to return to its initial position. In this case and to keep it simple I will extend the rod a little bit and I will add a weight on the opposite side of the hinge. Now if I push uh, the pendulum the gravity will pull on the upper ball in that direction. However if we look carefully we can see that the added weight will try to push back in the opposite direction. So we will have to apply torques with opposite directions and if the added weight has enough mass, the pendulum will stop moving and it will start to rotate in the opposite direction. It will swing back to its initial position. So we can see that by adding a part or changing the shape of a system, we can transform it from an inherently unstable system to a stable system. In this case, we chose to fight gravity by gravity. Now let's do the same thing to our airplane. Like the inverted pendulum, the lift forces are creating a torque around the center of gravity. So all what we have to do is to create a counteracting torque in the opposite direction to force the airplane to return to its initial position. How? Like we fought gravity by gravity, we will fight the lift forces by the lift forces. How? We create a wing, we install it at the tail of the aircraft and we let it create a force in the downward direction. Wait, wait, downward direction? We learned that wings create an upward lift and now you are telling us that it's pulling downward? Well, yeah. The lift direction depends on the angle of the wing. If the angle of the wing is pointing upward, then the lift will point upward. However, if the wing is pointing downward, then the lift will also point downward. We call it negative lift. It pulls in the downward direction. So now we need to install the wing such that it is pointing downward to create a negative force pointing downward. This force will create a torque toward the tail. So you can see that the torque of the small wing and the torque of the main wing are opposite and equal which will allow the aircraft to fly in an up straight manner. By doing so we manage to maintain the balance of the aircraft and to transform it from an unstable system to a stable system. Okay, now, so how about the wind? If the wind hits the body of the aircraft at the tail, the aircraft will lean forward. So, at level flight, the tail wing is pointing downward. When the aircraft leaned forward, the angle of this tail wing increased. 
As we have seen before, when the angle increases, the lift forces will increase in the downward direction. This will cause the torque to increase toward the tail direction and it will oppose the force created by the wind. So the airplane will return to its initial position. The opposite thing will happen if the wind hits the nose of the aircraft. The airplane will lean backward so now the tail wing is pointing upward and it will create an upward lift which forces the airplane to return to its initial position. So as the inverted pendulum, we can <coughs> see that by doing so, we managed to transform the airplane from an unstable system to a stable system by adding a small wing at the tail of the aircraft to keep it in balance. And now let's take a look at the real thing. Let's switch to the drone camera. Here we can see the main wing and we can see the small wing that we installed at the tail of the aircraft. We can also see that this wing is pointing downward to create negative lift as we have just learned. So the aircraft is now stable and balanced and everyone is happy. Until the same passenger decides to go again to the bathroom. What will happen is the, the center of gravity will shift a little bit toward the nose of the airplane which will increase uh, the distance between the two centers and in turn the torque of the main wings will increase uh, ever so slightly forcing the aircraft to lean forward. It will stay stable but it will lean forward. The same thing will happen if the pilot decides to increase the engine thrust. Because of the excess thrust force a torque will be generated toward the tail of the aircraft forcing the airplane to lean backward. It will stay stable but it will lean backward. So to maintain the balance of the aircraft, we need a way to control uh, the torque generated by the tail wing. How? Usually, in big airliners like this one, the tail wing itself can tilt up and down to change the amount of lift and torque generated. When the passenger moved toward the nose, the airplane tilted forward, so the tail wing will tilt downward to increase its negative angle and the amount of negative lift generated at the tail to regain the balance of the airplane. And for the thrust forces, the tail wing will tilt upward to decrease the lift and to regain the balance of the airplane. Now this tail wing has a name. We call it the horizontal stabilizer and the process of changing the angle of this stabilizer to change the balance of the airplane is called trim or trimming. It's like when a tree branch became unnecessarily long, we trim it. The same thing if the lift at the tail is unnecessarily big to maintain the balance, we trim it. So, in big airliners like this one, we call this wing a Trimmable Horizontal Stabilizer or THS. Trimmable Horizontal Stabilizer. Do all airplanes have a Trimmable Horizontal Stabilizer? No. Let's see. For small airplanes like this, the place of the passengers is well known and they cannot move inside the aircraft. At the same time, the engines are almost aligned with the center of gravity. So we only need to change the tail lift force by a small amount. So instead of changing the whole angle of the stabilizer, we only change a small part of it. This part can move up and down and the pilot has a switch controlled. If uh, he feels that the aircraft is leaning forward, he can change the angle of this part to regain the balance of the aircraft. We call this part a trim tab, trim tab. So in big airliners, the passengers and the cargo move a lot in the aircraft, which causes the center of gravity to shift a lot. So we need to change the stabilizer force by a big amount. And that is why we choose to move the whole angle of the stabilizer. 
Now in small airplanes the passengers do not move a lot in the airplane so we only need to change the tail force slightly so we use the trim tab to keep the airplane in balance and now we will see how the pilot is able to control the direction of the airplane at the back of the stabilizer we have a small wing called the elevator this elevator is connected to the pilot and allow him or her to control the angle of the airplane up and down how this elevator is connected to the pilot's control column if the pilot pulls the control column toward himself the elevator will deflect up which will create a negative lift in the downward direction which in turn will create a torque toward the tail of the uh, aircraft this torque will force the airplane to pitch up the opposite thing will happen if, the, if we push the column away from us now we learned about the role of the horizontal stabilizer well, how about the vertical stabilizer well from its name I think you already guessed its role let's see we are looking at the airplane from the top view if the wind hits the nose from the left side the airplane will turn to the right which will increase the angle of the vertical stabilizer which will create a force pulling the tail to the right side this force will push the airplane to return to its initial position it will oppose the wind and will return to initial state at the back of the vertical stabilizer we have the rudder and like the elevator this rudder is providing the pilot a means to control the direction of the airplane right and left right and left However, even if we change the direction of the nose, the airplane will keep moving in a straight line. The airplane is very heavy and the speed is too high. Even if we change the direction of the nose, the airplane would not change the direction of flight. Because if it's a huge mass, the airplane will fly straight in the direction of flight. So when do we use this rudder? The rudder has a lot of uses, I will explain them in later episodes. A very important one is at landing. If you have crosswind at 90 degrees to the runway, the airplane has to land in crabbing attitude, the nose direction into the wind, which can be dangerous for the landing gear. So, as soon as the airplane reaches the threshold of the runway, the pilot will send a command to the rudder to straighten the direction of the aircraft and to land parallel to the runway. Well, that's all for today. I wish that you learned something new. In the next episode, we will learn about the tools and the programs engineers use to estimate the size of the wings, how big the horizontal and vertical stabilizer should be, and at what distance from the main wing should we install the stabilizer. Somehow we will learn methods for designing airplanes. If you liked what you saw today, please subscribe, like and share. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And for the next time, please stay safe and see you.